My name's Caroline Beckett. I'm the vicar of Brightling Sea and I'm a trustee of Colchester Food Bank where I'm currently sitting. My name's Andy Griffiths. I work for the Church of England in East London and Essex and this is six minutes or so about community organising for churches. We want to suggest that one way to approach church life is as community organising. Community organising is a tradition, a set of tools, a rule and a process. Okay, so let's take those in turn. Um, first of all, it's a tradition, so it's got some history behind it. Yes, and people like Saul Alinsky, Barack Obama, Raymond Fung, Caitlin Harland and Angus Ritchie have expressed community organising over the years. Andy and I have been recording a series of podcasts about Christian leadership as community organising. And you can be found at atadistance.card.co. And we've had guests like Katie Tupling and Matthew Bolton too. That's atadistance.card.co and card is spelt C-A-R-R-D. You see, we think community organising isn't just an extra thing that can be added on to what churches already do. We reckon it's a way of seeing the whole of church life. Christian leaders who see their task as community organising take a 50-50 approach. In other words, they spend roughly as much time and energy on changing the world outside the church as they do on congregational development and worship and pastoral care inside the church. So, so community organising is a tradition and one that can change what we do internally and externally. But it's also a set of tools. That's right. And the basic tool is the one-to-one, -one, a way to have a conversation that genuinely discloses something about ourselves and listens curiously for the interests of someone else. But there are other tools too, for things like holding meetings, power analysis, storytelling and evangelism. And community organising isn't just a tradition and a set of tools, it's also a rule. We call it the iron rule. Never do for anyone what they could do for themselves. And because community organising is 50-50, if you like home affairs as well as foreign affairs, this approach changes the way we act, both in church and outside it. Inside church, it leads to an enabling style of leadership, where the leader isn't trying to make themselves central to church life, but to encourage and train others. Outside church, it means that we'll be a creative minority, joining with other minorities for the sake of justice. So we've used the word justice, so it's really important to say that we don't think of this as doing things for the poor. We're talking about becoming a church of the poor, where the poor have a seat at the table. There are two community organising jokes, and one of them is, if you haven't got a seat at the table, you're probably on the menu. And what's the other joke? So the other community organising joke is, the only thing that can successfully be built top down is a hole. Yeah, I think you had to be there. But OK, we've said community organising is a tradition, a set of tools and a rule. And the final thing is the most important. It's a process. This process is sometimes called the theory of change because people working in this tradition have refined it over the years as a model for how change happens. And Caroline, to be honest, at this moment, with hybrid church after COVID-19 and a need for a host of other adjustments, well, it seems to me that this is the moment, if ever, that a tried and tested theory of change is going to come in really handy. Absolutely. And the process is in five parts. Organising, that first stage could also be called community building, and then listening, and then planning, and then action through public storytelling, and then ensuring everyone has a seat at the table. And we think the order matters. You don't plan before you listen. 
And in the same way, you, you can't act until you've built community. You, you don't decide where the bus is going and then persuade people to get on the bus. You get people on the bus and then find ways together to work out where we're going. Learning community organizing is really a matter of learning to use this process, both in church and outside it. So we can't tell you in advance where community organizing will take you. And sometimes it can take you to some surprising places, but we can summarize some likely destinations. So you'll probably end up doing evangelism. Churches that do community organizing have a distinctive approach to evangelism that's all about provoking questions and telling stories and being good partners with others. It works more effectively than any other approach that Caroline and I have discovered. And there's broad-based leadership. You'll end up with lots more leaders than you had at the beginning. And there is justice. Because when something inside you yearns, perhaps angrily, for things to be different, that's the energy that can be channeled for justice. Action will lead to negotiation, maybe with the state or big business, and that will bring real change. We've seen refugees resettled, people paid the living wage, community land trusts, mental health provision secured, trees planted, and even a change of policy by a swimming pool. And lots of the work that we do in churches is mercy work, is tending to the people who are hurt by forces they can't control. Justice work is going that one stage further and putting a spoke in the wheel that is crushing people. And then finally, Eucharist. Christian leaders who have a community organizing model aren't trying to get themselves into a better position. They're helping their community members get where they need to be. And there's no better place to be than the table of God. One day God will put the world right and there will be a great banquet. Meanwhile, we live in the world as it is, longing for the world as it should be and will be. And community organizing is one way God is bringing the world as it should be into reality now. Thank you for listening.